Hello, my friend. Don't know why I did that. My name is Tammy Kay. Welcome to my channel. If you're still with me, today we are talking about water control, and this is something we're going to be doing together. And so water control is essentially how much water to paint ratio to get the consistencies that you want. Really thin paint or thicker paint or somewhere in between. We're also gonna do a value scale so that you can know what value, lightness or darkness you'll get by adding more water or doing less water and more paint. So stick with us. This is an older video I filmed before, a little clip of it. I hope you find it interesting and helpful. A big question that I get is paint consistency. How much water to paint do you need to use? And so we're gonna talk about that next as we talk about these five items and how to visualize your paint consistency from a weak tea all the way to butter. So we're gonna start with our weak tea mixture and we're just going to take uh, some of our paint here, adding it to this space. And what we wanna look for is a lot of water and a little bit of pigment, just kind of like this, very weak tea. You can still see there's color, it flows and moves really well. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to paint that in our example of weak tea. So this can be good for a basic wash, like a background that you're doing on a painting. And it's so light that it may not, I'm gonna take off some of this liquid too, that you're not gonna be able to use it for, like if you're doing layering on something, this would be your first wash, your first basic wash with something. Okay, so now we're gonna add a little bit more pigment to this and it's gonna get a little bit more thick, and look, this does move pretty well, but it is a bit more intense. So this one, we're going to paint that in, and it's gonna be for your darker washes. I think I'm gonna do a little bit more pigment here, a little bit more paint. It's gonna be for a background wash. Again, if you're doing florals, um, and you're wanting to add nice color in the background, or maybe you're doing a landscape, and you want to add a really nice sky. This would be a good consistency for that as well. Either this one or your weak tea coffee is gonna be what you're going for. If you want a dark one, lighter weak tea. Okay, so now we're gonna go with our milk consistency. With milk consistency, the paint doesn't flow as easily on the palette, but you can still see some movement. And I would say this is something that you could use like for details on a flower um, so but not not as dark as like your shadows so I'm just adding more pigment so this it flows but not as easily so a little bit more because the next one is cream which is not supposed to flow at all all right so I'm going to add that to our space over here and as you're seeing all this you're going to see the color is starting to darken up little by little. Also, from also knowing and remembering that watercolor does dry about one shade lighter. So now we have a nice light, medium, and a darker color. Let's mix. Let's mix this in water. And now we're going to take even more paint. So what we're looking for here is going to be our cream consistency. You're not going to see movement. Okay, it should not flow in your palette. And I'm gonna do a little bit more water and a little bit more pigment so that we can really demonstrate that. Because if you don't have enough liquid, it's not gonna flow much anyway. So that's staying put pretty good. So it's like probably as much um, as we can tolerate water in there before it becomes butter because um, it's just very little water, but with butter, you're not gonna have water hardly at all, if any. All right, so we're gonna add that on. So it's quite saturated. If you're not sure if you're right at it, you can go ahead and continue to add on a little bit more of your paint. The big thing is you're gonna see your paint start to darken up a lot here. Okay. So we don't have any flowing on the paper and this is gonna be really good for your darkest darks, your shadow moments, that kind of thing. All right, and the last one is going to be, I'm just going to dab my brush here and I'm just going to pick up pigment almost straight from the palette. If you cannot, scrub, 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 
you can add a little water. This is just gonna be your, your thickest one. And you're gonna get some dry brushing here. This is where it's pretty much unusable, in my opinion. I'm having a really hard time just getting this paint on the palette, from the palette onto the paper because I'm using very little water. And so I personally don't use it this thick. I know some people will use it just for some extreme highlights. Say you could use it for white, uh, maybe acrylic. Um, if you have watercolor white, which is not very common on a palette, then you could use that for a little bright highlight, something really intense. And see how hard it is to even paint this on. It is so thick and intense here. Okay. So, you know, let me know in comments if you like using butter for something uh, besides putting it on your bread. Um, obviously not talking about food here, although it seems like it with all these terms, okay? So just darkening up that part here. And, and maybe you do like to use this consistency. I would love to hear about it and what are the times you would use it for. If you guys are liking this video, please like it, hit the like button, and feel free to subscribe to my channel. All right, so I've cleaned my water here. I'm just gonna clean my brush a little bit. And we're gonna do something called a value scale. So a value scale is going to demonstrate how by adding water to a paint, you can lighten it up significantly to get um, variations in the likeness and darkness. Value just means the lightness and the darkness of a pigment or a paint. I keep saying pigment and paint. Often we interchange those terms. Uh, paint is referring to the product once you put together pigment and binder and the things that go into making a paint. So trying to keep those terms straight, sometimes I forget. All right, so a value scale is gonna give us a really dark color first and we're gonna go lighter and lighter until we get to the lightest value. We're gonna do 10 of these. I'm gonna start with a red color today. So I'm gonna grab some on my brush and I'm gonna go as dark as I possibly can. Now I do have a bit of water on there. I want it to be as thick as possible where I can still paint, not butter, but definitely more of a creamy consistency. And so all I'm gonna do is make a mark on my paper with this color, just like that, okay? So that is my, my darkest value. Now I'm gonna dip my brush in here and I'm gonna squeegee off the side and then I'm gonna do my next value. And you can see it's already starting to lighten up a lot. Dipping, squeegee, and we'll see if we can get to 10 without running out, without getting too light where we can't see anything anymore. This is such a simple activity or exercise. Look at how pretty my water is looking. And this is gonna show you because with watercolor, we're not adding white to make things light like in other mediums, acrylic and oils. So we have to lighten by adding our water. And this is something uh, we talk about brush control. We talk about water control. Um, this is something that's gonna help you learn that water control, we're at eight right now, by doing activities like this. So people ask me all the time, how much water to paint? And it, the answer really is, it depends on what you're trying to paint. Now we can keep going. I'm gonna go use my clean water here and we might find a different um, result. So if you're trying to do a light wash, a background, you're gonna wanna go just like we've shown with the consistency, you're gonna wanna go lots of water, very little pigment, do a weak tea, or even a coffee, that would work too. But if you're wanting to do shadows and darks, you're gonna wanna go this cream right here. And this is cream, because we have enough liquid that we can move this on our paper. Let's do this in another color. I'm gonna change out my water, I'll be right back. All right, let's do this in a purple. And I'm gonna grab some of that purple. See, I have a lot of water that I put on there and maybe I don't want that much. I'm just gonna take a little bit off. And I just want it as thick as possible without not being able to move the paint on the paper. So we're gonna do that really dark purple there. Let's just slowly dip in, squeegee off some of that paint. And it's such a beautiful shade here too. I love that. So if you want to control your water, use your paper towel to dab your brush so you don't have so much water on on your brush um, and you're not flooding 
the area you're trying to paint. If you put too much water, then your paint is gonna spread and you're going to get some texture blooms. What happens is you put your paint down just like that, and then it's a little bit, starting to a little bit kind of dry, and then you just go and paint over that again. And adding more pigment and more water is going to push the original paint and water aside, and it's going to create what we call these uh, cauliflower blooms. And it's a texture that some artists really enjoy and will do purposefully, but others, especially when you're learning, it can be very frustrating if you don't want those textures on purpose and they're just showing up. Okay, so that is our demonstration today of water control um, and what kind of consistency you want and how to create a value scale. All right guys, we did the water control whole thing. I hope that that was helpful. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, subscribe to my channel and check out all the fun descriptions linked below, including my free ebook on how to let go of perfectionism in your art. I appreciate you being here and I hope that you guys have some fun painting time soon. Happy painting to you, and especially happy mental health. Bye guys.